Okay, and you can see as I hand buff the saddle with my hand itself, the saddle is starting to shine again. What I'm, while I'm using my hand, instead of a, a rag or a brush or anything like that is, is a human's body temperature is 98 degrees. And what that does is heat up the chemicals we've applied to this saddle and helps it penetrate into the leather better. Yeah. You need the heat of your body to bring the shine back out. Now when we're done and we've really rubbed on it, we'll use, um, I prefer to use shoe shine rags. Um, they have a little nap to them and uh, it will uh, continue to add add shine to the saddle as you buff. But it's, uh, it's labor intensive. You need to spend some time rubbing and rubbing and rubbing and then you go get your uh, shoe shine rag. So this is a well used shoe shine rag. We're going to take the clean end of it. I'm just going to keep rubbing. Okay, in this case, uh, we, like I said, we did the saddle a good 10 years ago. And uh, I know for sure that for four years it looked perfectly new and it was used, you know, in the show pen. Um, but we added a little shine by using a matching shoe polish. We put a matching shoe polish on, a light coat on, and buff that to add some shine. So that's, a, that's another thing you can do as long as it, you're using the right shoe polish that matches well. Um, we prefer Meltonian brand. Um, it's got more conditioners in it than just wax. As you can see, there's, you know, it, it's kind of like old-fashioned wax in a car. It takes uh, lots and lots of rubbing. But the big deal is, when you're done with this, you're set for a good period of time with a new-looking saddle. If your saddle doesn't have mold, it is probably still a good thing to do. Um, if, if you don't see any mold, I'd probably skip the scrubbing bubbles, but I would still use a little Lysol AC, IC, intensive care. But uh, it's work, it's not easy. That this, I mean, was to me in its day a hugely expensive saddle, and the quality is is so extremely good on the way the saddle was built. Um, you can't see as well as I can see how exquisitely the saddle was tooled, or you can't feel the quality of leather that's in this saddle. But I guarantee you that this is a premium saddle. Um, you know, it may have cost up to $10,000 15 years ago, so you can guess what it would cost today. Let's, okay, 
So now you can see after, oh, 45 minutes of rubbing, we're starting to get a sheen on that saddle again. Um, so it, again, it's just plain old elbow grease. But do you want to go buy, you know, a new $30,000 saddle? Or do you want to spend a couple hours of your time and have one that looks like a new $30,000 saddle? That's, that's your decision. But uh, the saddle is just, I've always admired the saddle. I admired it the first time I worked on it. Um, whoever made it was just, a premium saddle maker and uh, there's part of it that looks like new you can make the whole saddle look like new if you choose uh, the right products use them in the right order and put a little work into it again it was Scrubbing bubbles, which everybody laughs at, but I'll guarantee you some of the best saddle makers in the world use it to restore saddles. Lysol IC, which you will uh, unfortunately see if you're laying in a hospital bed. Thievings, silicone lanolin saddle spray, and Farnham Light Oil Needs Foot Oil. Those are the products you need, along with the toothbrush, some shop rags, a regular brush, and a bunch of work. I really like to have them not in a bag with a fan on them or a dehumidifier on them. I use a fan and that works pretty well in my barn. Um, but your light oil Western Breed Show saddles cannot be exposed to too much sunlight. So you, you need to keep them um, in your tack room in the dark, you know, get them out, showing them, practicing them for an hour, but don't leave them sit out in the sunlight and darken them. Um, this is an Arabian saddle and some Western breeds are going to dark saddles again. Um, then it you know, you can leave this sit out in the sun all day. You know, it may dry it out a little bit or something, but it won't affect the color. So we put together kits to uh, totally condition your saddle. Um, if it's a work saddle, a dark saddle, we put pure Neats foot oil in it because it tends to stay in your saddle a little longer and soften a little better uh, than the products we use today. But for light oil saddles, we always use the Farnham Needs Foot Oil, Lightning Oil, but we still use the Lysol IC, we still use scrubbing bubbles. Um, and if you're not having a mold problem at all, um, and don't, you're just living in an area where there's not one, or in an environment where there's not one, then we use boot and shoe reptile cleaning foam or conditioner to clean the cracks of your saddles and clean the tooling. But there are very few pieces, places in the country that don't have trouble with mold and need to really get after it. So um, when we send you a saddle cleaning kit, We'll give you written step-by-step -step instructions. And um, there's also on our website another good little video clip on oiling and maintaining and cleaning a work saddle. So that may be something you want to watch first and then take a look at this because this is a show saddle. The saddle's real silver. We don't use ever use any silver cleaner on this saddle. The only thing we clean the silver with is 100% cotton cloths. Um, we prefer, you know, 
no nylon, no synthetic materials, just 100% cotton. Because this is real silver, it's tarnished or oxidized from the air. And all you need to do is rub that oxidation off to bring your original new shine back. In fact, in a lot of cases we find that silver cleaners um, are harmful to the leather. You miss, you get some on the leather and it's harmful to the leather. Now, there certainly are cases where you do need to use silver cleaners, but you need to be very careful on how you use them. What are the t when are the times when you would use a silver cleaner? Uh, when the silver is less expensive, um, when it is just totally, unbelievably dirty, filthy, um, cheaper silver, though, is, is the main reason that you would need to use silver cleaners. Not a saddle like this. Um, the saddle is, I assume, I mean, it's a solid, heavy sheet of sterling on top. I assume, assume there's a little nickel on the bottom, but I haven't, uh, I don't remember from the first time when we took it apart. But there's a big sheet of heavy sterling on top of this saddle. And... Uh, so no chemicals at all, just rub. Okay, so normal people like you and I are not going to know, I mean, aside from the fact that you just said there's a heavy sheet of sterling on there, how do you know if you have cheap silver on your saddle versus a good quality sterling silver, or silver, I should say? Well, we do uh, what some people call the sniff test, but all you do is you take a 100% cotton rag give this five swipes, you give the saddle next to it five swipes, and if this one immediately sh brightens very quickly, um, you get some green or black oxidation off of it, you know it's solid sterling. The next saddle doesn't clean very quickly or um, just doesn't come back to the shine that the sterling one did, then you know it's less expensive silver. One of the worst things we see is um, people neglect their tie strap, their off strap, and uh, their stirrup leathers here. These need oiled much more frequently than your whole saddle, cleaned and oiled. So uh, if you want to save yourself from getting hurt, check your off strap, your tri stra tie strap, and your saddle leathers. Check them for wear, check them for softness, keep them oiled.